Mezco. Now, I think it's safe to say that Mezco has brought us some of the best collector figures currently out there. The only other Mezco item I have is the small but mighty Keaton Batman 1989 Deluxe figure, which I happen to really like. Well, what about this one? Does the £157.99 pence price tag justify what we actually get? Now, I have had a few issues with my example, which I'll be going through in the review. But like we always do, we shall start with the box. So there's not too much going on with this box. It's quite simple. As you can see, not much going on. But on the front of the box, we do have Batman and the DC logos on there, as well as the Batman emblem. On the side of the box we have yet more Batman emblems and a Batman. And on the back it just pictures there of the figure with the iconic shot there of the mighty Keaton, a Batman, looking at the bat signal. And then on top of the box just the 112 collective pose, play and display. So the figure does come with one head attached already. But it comes with uh, three other heads, two capes, four pairs of hands, as well as all the other little accessories you would expect, including the dismantled grapnel launcher, four batarangs, detonator, grapnel launcher, smoke bomb, and a stand, and a bag to put everything else in, and a couple of leaflets. Let's move on to the accessories and we'll start with the first of four heads. Now these are of excellent quality I must say. Um, there are a few imperfections on some of them but they are very minor I must say. Uh, so just here you can probably see just the bottom of his um, neck. There's a little bit of um, sort of dry white paint. Um, yeah. The artist must have accidentally brushed it when they were maybe doing the eyes. This is a quite small, but uh, yeah, I mean, that should come off fairly easily. But the emblem is of excellent detail. There is little or even no um, paint over spill on there. Head number two, which is the head that I um, use the most. Uh, I couldn't see any uh, sort of painting issues on this one in particular. Um, again, really nice uh, sculpt of the Mighty Keaton, a Batman. The eyes looking particularly good on this example. Head number three. There we go, we got the uh, sort of battle damaged Batman. Um, I do like this sculpt, although I don't really like the sort of um, opened pout look. I don't quite, yeah, I'm not really too sure what he's open mouth about. Uh, that's not paint on there, it's just maybe a bit of dust, I think. It's a speckle of something, but it's not paint. Yes, uh, really nicely detailed again. Loads of great detail on the blood running down his cheek. And again, the emblem looking really nice. And now, head number four, which is the one I have issues with. As you can probably see already, I do have a cross-eyed Mighty Keaton, a Batman, uh, and his emblem also, uh, I can get that, uh, there we go. Yeah, see there's a bit of um, extra plastic on there, which wasn't removed. And ever so slight uh, spillage on the black leaking into the emblem there. But that's his eyes that uh, really do it for me. So on the back of this uh, head, there is a toggle to uh, move the eyes from left to right, obviously. And I will demonstrate that. So as you can see, um, it's not so bad like this, I suppose. But uh, yeah, so his or this eye on this side. Um, yeah, it's looking a little bit too much that way. If we look the other way, again, it's 
it doesn't quite look right, does it? Now, I'm not too sure people have problems with this. So this, so that's looking straightforward. He's definitely a bit cross-eyed. Uh, yeah, so this is my least used head for obvious reasons, because of the emblem and obviously the eye problem. But uh, sculpting-wise, it is a good sculpt of the Mighty Keys and Batman. Just a shame about the eyes. Next up is the hands. So I shan't go through all the hands, but I'll give you one example. So they're all detailed like this. They all have the uh, studs on his glove, as should be. Again, a spin textured. It's a nice mold. It fits onto the figure really easily. And uh, I believe this one is to grip his uh, grapnel launcher, which is quite fiddly to do, but you know these are small items. We also get uh, quite a few of Batarangs. Here's just one of them. Again, this is very small, and I'll try my best to get this in focus. There we are. You can see there's lots of detail on here. And we also have a wider version of the Batarang as well. So you can hold it in his hand. Next up is the Gauntlet firing spear gun thing. It does open up like so. It is very delicate, this uh, accessory, so I shan't be playing around too much. But it is very well painted, much better than the Beast Kingdom one. All the details are on there. Next we have the detonator. Don't think it's ever seen in the film, but uh, yeah, this is what uh, the Mighty Keaton Batman used to detonate the uh, little grenade bomby things off the Batmobile. Next up we have a uh, smoke bomb. Uh, this is a very, very small item, uh, so there's not too much to show, but uh, yeah, you get the single one with this particular figure. The remote control for the Batmobile. Now this is actually very highly detailed because we turn it around, as you may see, we do have a little Batman symbol on the remote, which I haven't seen before uh, on other figures. So that's quite a nice touch. But there is the Mighty Keys and Batman uh, remote control for the Batmobile. We also have a single throwing star. Again, it wasn't featured in the film itself, but they were made, never used. But just get the one in this particular figure. Again, nicely detailed. You can see the uh, serration in the uh, blade there. Next up, we have the uh, grapnel launcher. As you can see in its sort of uh, before firing state, it comes in two halves. Now the Mighty Keys and Batman puts them together, which seems like a long-winded way of doing things. So there we go. It looks cool. Uh, yes, yeah, so there we go. The, the bottom half is on the right-hand side there, and the top half is on the left. And on the other side, it's just got some little paint detail there on the back, representing the bolts that hold it all together. Next up is the assembled uh, grapnel launcher there. So that's how it looks once he puts it together. Again, on the back, they have painted the uh, the bolts on the back there. We have the grapnel launcher hook with wire attached. And the last item is just the hook for the grapnel launcher. There we are. Um, so this does actually fit into the grapnel gun, like so. So that's how it looks when it's attached. It doesn't push in that far and it's a bit of a tight fit, but uh, it looks pretty good with it on. Right, let's move on to the cape because this is a bit of a job to get this onto the figure. It's the same for both, whether it's the wide version or the non-wide version. This is the wide version, so there's uh, wires in the front here like there normally is, but every other little uh, fold in here does have a wire in. So, you know, there is quite a bit of, uh, you know, movability in this thing. However, there is a little hack you can do to get all these wired up. Jimbo's Customs. Now he's the guy to go to if you want to go and see how you get these wired up. 
I've left his video to that in the description below and a link to his channel as well. So please go and check that out if you do want to add more wires into this. I will be doing that uh, once I've uh, completed this video just so I've got some more flexibility in this cape. Anyway, so let's move on to getting this thing on because it is not easy. So first, obviously, we remove the head. Fortunately, it is magnetic, so it's easy. So what I've had to do, because when you first get this, as you can see, there's a lot of uh, extra material sort of around this ring part here. Now, I did try to trim this off, but it didn't, I still could not get it on. So in the end, I had to loosen uh, these threads and pull it out just to get a small gap around the ring there and it still isn't easy to get on but I'll try on camera right so as you may see there is like a little uh, like lug just there which goes into the back of the neck so the trick is is to push that in and then fit the rest of the ring around there now this does cause a lot of issues as you can see it won't go on because this material around the top of the neck is quite soft. Now as you try to press it in, you end up just pressing on the soft rubbery body here. So it is an effort to get it on. The best way I found was to use tweezers and just force it over basically to get that on. Then using the blunt end of the tweezers, I literally just uh, squeeze that over. Obviously being gentle on the figure as this is quite delicate like so you may have to stretch the cape out as well but it does go on and it shouldn't come off it does look like it's going to pop off any second but it shouldn't do and then you can just pop the head back on like so and then we have a mighty keaton batman ready to rock let's put this belt down there there we go now i did the same with the non-wide version of the cape i just loosened the uh as you can see there the threads and as you put it on, you just stretch it across and then use the tweezers just to push around on this ring just to get to fit. It took many attempts the first time and to be, and to be honest, I had to take this off camera to do it again. Um, so yeah, I doubt I'll be swapping capes all that often just because it is very difficult to get on. But once it's on, it does look rather nice. And once I've got the extra wires on here, as you can see this bit wants to pop up with the wire with the extra wires in that should stay down if you want him to look more like that and finally let's take a look at the figure itself so i did have uh, initial issues when i opened this up out of the box namely it was to do with the magnets uh, one of them had dropped off and uh, i managed to find it in the box but i needed to uh, obviously glue that back in and also um, this magnet inside the body, when you went to pull the head off, it would remove that magnet as well. Um, not too much of a bother, you just have to glue it back in, but don't make the mistake I made and double check the, you know, the polarity because I glued it back in without checking and I went ahead you know, to put the head back on and it was, you know, I couldn't, it was pedal opposite so it wouldn't work. So yeah, that's just something to be mindful of when you first get this. Check all the magnets in the heads. Um, as I just said, I had one that fallen out. So this is like a metal skeleton over a really sort of soft uh, sort of latex body. It has very good articulation and it is a bit on the stiff side in some areas, particularly around the shoulders. Um, but Unfortunately, I have broken one of his arms, which is this one. Now, initially, I thought that I had broken his elbow, but you can, as you can see, you can still move the elbow quite nicely. And his shoulder does still move as well. But what I've done somehow is broken his arm right sort of in the middle of his bicep there. It's, uh, as you can see, look, I can actually pull down on his arm. It moves around. I can actually twist his arm like this, as you can see. Um, yeah, that's a bit of a problem. As you cannot see the articulation, you have to be extra careful when moving this thing around. So at the moment, if I want to move his shoulder there, I have to really grab that part and move it up and down. Like I say, it's not 
an awful problem. I'd rather it was broken there than at his shoulder or at his elbow. At least I can still move his elbow joints around. But yeah, but it is very, very delicate. Uh, the legs are quite stiff. Um, the knees aren't so bad. But yeah, I would try not to move this thing too much, if at all possible. Now, the belt does have some pretty nifty features, which is this. It is magnetic, so you can actually keep you know, his accessories on there. Obviously, it only works with some accessories, so the dismantled grapnel gun, and then the wired versions of the grapnel hook and also the batarang as well can also go on there I don't think it's, the, it's designed for these particular ones but it still looks pretty cool I think so the box does come with a couple of pieces of instructions uh, this one here is sort of demonstrating how to put on the cape which it makes it look really easy but it's not and obviously the articulation, and it does ha say in several places on both pieces uh, to be extremely careful when moving this. Um, yeah, I'm quite gutted that, you know, this thing was uh, 157 pounds and 99 pence, and it's a bit broken. The cape, you know, is awkward to get on and off. The magnets fell out and uh, yeah, I mean, it obviously is a extraordinarily well detailed uh, figure. Um, I'm just on the fence of whether this is worth that amount of money or not. I'm sure in other parts of the world, this thing is probably a bit more reasonably priced, but here in the UK, it is uh, very expensive. And for a 1 12th scale figure as well, um, yeah, it's a lot of money for what you actually get. But it is the mighty Keaton, a Batman. So there we go, from Mezco Toys, the mighty Keaton Batman from uh, 1989. So obviously, uh, you know, this does have a few issues as I've already discussed. The cape, I mean, I think that that's how it comes with all the examples. It, it just is a bit of a pain to get on and off, mostly on to be fair. And obviously I have an issue with the magnet, but I was able to repair that myself. The box, well, as I've already said, it is a bit boring. I mean, there's not much going on. We just have the logo at the front of the box, which is absolutely fine, there's no problem with that. But, you know, on the back, it's just, you know, that sort of epic uh, image of Batman looking up towards the sky at the bat signal, and at the bottom, just a few sort of stills of the figure. And that's about it. Usually these boxes come with some details on the back about what's in the box and so on and so forth. So, yes, yeah, shame. I mean, I know Mezco have been doing these sort of tin boxes and uh, I was hoping this was gonna come one of those, but never mind, it is what it is. Now, do I think this is worth 157 pounds and 99 pence? I mean, it is an incredibly well-detailed figure. The painting on this is virtually flawless. The sculpt is excellent. Uh, but still, for its size and the accessories you get with this, I think it's a bit of an ask myself. But, as I said, you probably could pick this up a bit cheaper. But, overall, I am very happy with this, despite the broken arm. And it is going to look really nice in a Batman corner, joining the rest of the mighty Keaton Batman. So that is it for this video. Thank you so much for watching. If you do enjoy my content, please do consider subscribing. And until the next one, I'll see you later.